Hey, what's up everybody? My name is Trofin at the Babbling Belgian and welcome back to the Outer Worlds. We're still in the Emerald Vale with uh, our power-suited companion Barvati. I love it. We're, we're calling ourselves the Redhead Squad from, from now on. So, um, we just got, uh, we just talked to Adelaide over here and she told us that, well, instead of just taking away our power, why not just take away the power from, you know, Edgewater over there and give us all the power which is of course an obvious reaction that she's gonna get but uh, now it's up to us to make that decision I'm gonna head back to Edgewater and see what we can do over there because I feel like we need to talk to a few people over there before we make that decision so let's do that we're passing by the community center again and I'm really wondering whether I can take out those um, Marauders now. I mean, we leveled up once. We have better weaponry now. And, I mean, he's a ringleader, but with this new weapon, this should this should work, right? Famous last words, but it's okay. So there's definitely five Marauders here. So that's an explosive there. That guy goes down. I think there's... There we go, there that guy goes. I should probably go out of stealth. There goes another one. The sniper rifle guy. And then I'm gonna slow-mo. And... Take him out like that. That's the last of them. Indeed it is. There we go. Our Valti and I are a killing squad right now. That is... That was awesome. The ringleader has a light machine gun. It counts as a heavy weapon, but uses light ammo, but it has 320 DPS. I think that's something for uh, for you, Parvati. So there we go. Now she should do double the damage as she did before, compared to what she did before. But yeah, we we'll guess we'll see about that later on. Let's check out the rest of these corpses. Because it was a sniper dude here somewhere as well. There we go. Heavy ammo and the toss ball card for Thomas B. Henry. Okay. And a hunting rifle. So long guns. Damage 66 with a single shot. I think I'm going to grab that. Just because, I mean, I'm focusing on long guns anyway. And if I have a sort of sniper rifle, that's going to come in handy. But we're back at Atchwater now. So let's have a look-see inside. Wait, there's two more, two more um, marauders here. here okay, that apparently didn't do anything. There we go. And then I think I can go over here. Boom, boom. There we go. He wasn't really doing anything there for some reason, so. You're dead, hooligan. Two dead hooligans. With a bit of extra ammo. Oh, and they were killing prats. That's sad. That's not good now, is it? But let's go check out uh, the inside of Edgewater again and talk to a few people. Because we still need to uh, gather up some money for the graves. So let's talk to Martin first. Martin is supposed to be... Is he inside of this building? Seems like he is. It gives us an opportunity to explore Edgewater a bit further as well. So let's open up this door. Hello, Martin. I'm fine, Mr. Thompson. Never been healthier. Well, uh, did, uh, did Mr. Thompson send ya? Well, you? No. Mr. Thompson, I'll be right at my post. Tomorrow. Uh, bright and early tomorrow. Because I'm definitely not plagued. As spry as a spring chicken. <laughs> That's old Abernathy. Yeah, he looks pretty sick, so uh, you want to tell me what's got you so nervous? You some sort of wandering alienist? Walking into a man's own domicile, pestering him about his mental state? Um, so I'm here to collect your graveside fees, by the way. Silas knows, doesn't he? That's why he sent you. That's why he wants me to pay up. He knows. So he's clearly sick, but he told me everything. How long did you think you could keep a secret like that? Sounds like he's already told you. You may as well hear it from me. I'm dying. I'm not long for this world. The date of my expiration is fast approaching. 
And soon I shall be ushered through the great cannery in the skies. Don't say that, Mr. Abernathy. You still got a couple decades in you? I'd steer clear, Ms. Holcomb. My affliction's bound to be contagious. It's plague. Has to be. Silas knows. He knows I got one foot in my grave, and now he wants to charge me for the other one. Um, I'm sorry to hear about that indeed, because, of course, we don't want to, well, force him to pay up if he's that sick. You are? Oh, wow. First time anyone's ever told me that. I'll pay your fees. I don't want any trouble from Silas. But if you could see a way to freelancing for me, I could really use the help. Okay, um, how, how, how can I help? There's a cache of anthracillin tucked away in the old community center. Powerful stuff. Stronger than what we got, anyway. I need you to break in, nab that medicine and bring it back to me. Well, what do you know? I already done that. <laughs> Here we go. Is this the medicine you're talking about? You've been there already? And you ain't been ground down into marauder meat? Let's see it. Don't keep us waiting. So it's all yours. Sweet life-given nostrum. The first Ooh, that's a nice a batch of experience. Scratch together all the bits I had around the domicile. It ain't as much as you deserve, but it's all I got. Spacer's choice reputation increased. Um, so I can persuade him to give him more. You're wringing the blood out of me. Here, you can have whatever's in my pockets. There we go. See you around, Abernathy. Whee! Level 4! That was a whole bunch of experience in one go. So, hello Parvati, hope, hope you didn't mind me persuading the man. Your reputation with the faction has changed if enemies are hostile, but your reputation isn't kill on site. Leaving for a few days might make that better, I suppose. Can I actually check that? Well, we have our skills first, so let's go uh, 5 more points into stealth, so that should get us a stealth attack, a sneak attack. Uh, two more into tech, and then three more into ranged. And now we have time dilation location hits unlocked, so hitting enemies in different locations doing TTD maims or cripples those body parts. Try different locations to see the different effects. Hits to the chest produce different effects when using different weapons. And then I think I've un also unlocked, so from now on, I've also unlocked the sneak attack, so attack unaware enemies while crouched to deal bonus damage. And then in tech, I haven't really gained anything. What do I get at science 40? Think ring cost minus 50%. Might actually be nice as well, but onto perks. So I think I said before that I was going to go with pack mule. Because um, everything else, yeah, there's a, a lot of extra stuff, of course. Yeah, let's go with pack mule. So that's 50 kilograms extra carrying capacity, which seems like a hell of a lot. So apply. There we go. So now that gets us 140 carrying capacity, which seems very, very good. So that's that. Let's go talk to the two other people. So next stop is Conrad. Seems to be like he's in the barber shop. That sounds great. Hello, Conrad. But Conrad sells real good disinfectant. Okay, that was a weird. Why does the why does the barber look like a surgeon? This is a bit, a bit weird. Please don't touch anything. Your hands are probably crawling with germs. Physical hygiene recapitulates moral hygiene. Cleanliness is next to lawfulness. They all seem so cocky. I can show you my hands with Intimidate. Um, do your haircuts usually come with free lectures? We don't believe in free anything here in Edgewater. We're a spacer's choice company. I'm Conrad. You will report to me if your hair fails to meet Spacer's Choice aesthetic standards. You will also report to me in the event of your death, whereupon I will clean and prepare your remains for interment. Okay, so he's the coroner and the barber. That's a bit weird, but Silas... Oh, you know what? I want to know what he means by that. Remains for interment. Burial in the unfortunate event of a fatality. It's what a barber does. We make you presentable. What? So, that is so weird. Speaking of burial, Silas sent me to collect your fees. Ah, gravesite fees. 
Silas and I had talked about this at length. I thought I'd made it clear my pecuniary situation precludes the necessary restitutions. Um, you mean you're broke, as I understand what he's saying. He's just using fancy words. As broke as pie crust, friend. Bitless, indigent, destitute. I simply cannot afford it. I am a blemish on the prosperity of our fair settlement. When I expire, I expect Silas to toss my body into a ditch. I don't believe him. I mean, he has his own barber shop, and he seems to not be lacking for work. Um, you have a very loose definition of the word prosperity. Edgewater is built on the discipline and sacrifice of its people. Say what you will about our town, but we all pull together. Tell Silas I can't afford to pay, and that I fully expect to have my medical rights revoked for this dereliction. With my apologies. I don't... Wait, what? Just give Silas an IOU. Oh yeah, an IOU. Okay, I get it, but... Medical rights? Some time ago, I fell ill with the plague. By the grace of the law, and through my own hard work, I'd proven worthy of treatment. Frankly, I don't imagine I'll earn that right a second time. The barber work hasn't been profitable, you see. I've had to keep this old place running with my own savings. Okay, so he probably doesn't have actual money, which is... I, I do apologize for my uh, my preconceptions there, so uh, just give Silas an IOU. Not a bad idea. But I'd need some kind of collateral. My pair of lucky clippers! No, that won't do. Your idea intrigues me, but I'm afraid I don't have anything to give Silas. I'm open to suggestions. Um, I'll let you know if I think of anything. Much obliged. Interesting. So this gives me a secondary objective, but... Oh, wow. Hi, Pravati, you're a bit close. Um, can I check in here? Does he have anything fancy that could be... Ooh, what's this? Conrad receptionist shot himself. This is bad. Company's going to have to call it for what it is. Destruction of Space's Choice property. Eugene was an asset and somebody has to pay his body price. But he, he shot himself. Oh, God. This is gonna ruin us. So I was thinking that we pawn off his teeth. Eugene had a full set of gold teeth. Heirlooms passed down his family or something. You're processing his body, right? Just dig around and pry them out. We'll sell the teeth somewhere nice and quiet, use the bits to pay his body price, and nobody's the wiser. What do you think? Don't write back, in fact, don't talk to me at all. Just give me a special signal next time you see me. Waggle your eyebrows. Phyllis G. Um, we, we could probably use the gold teeth then. It's probably not that hard to, to come by. Um, so yeah, somebody committed suicide and they were worried about yeah, destroying property so hello what can i do for you you can use the gold teeth so i have two options here so persuade one i know about eugene why not use his teeth as collateral for your graveside fee so that sounds great you know about eugene how um i, I found a f i'm a mind reader <laughs> i found a note then you know phyllis suggested selling off eugene's gold teeth i didn't approve of the idea then and i don't approve of it now eugene's golden teeth were a family heirloom representing three generations of poor dental hygiene. He took them to his grave. Okay, but I'm sure he won't miss them. That's unthinkable. Eugene's body and all rare earth minerals contained therein are solely the property of Spacer's choice. I can't ask Silas to dig up a man's body and pry a few teeth loose from his jaw just to pay my bills. Can I? Uh, are you asking rhetorically? Because if you're being serious... Ugh, gross. Desperate measures, Miss Holcomb. Desperate measures. I'm going to have to ask Silas to dig up those teeth. It's the only way I'm paying my gravesite fees. Because, I mean, yes, it's morally definitely bad. But on the other hand, if you're going by the company standards... They just said that it's their property, but they put their property in the ground to not use it anymore. So, um, I, I'm just here to collect your dues. Here you are. Gravesite papers affixed with my signature and an IOU. There we go. Conrad, goodbye.
I'm gonna talk to you again for that medicine thingy. Uh, there we go. You sound like you've had some training. I know a thing of two or two about medicine. Oh, am I in the company of a fellow doctor? I, are you a doctor? Only if you use the term doctor loosely. So yeah, I started out as a medical um, assistant. That wasn't really so good. But so, but yeah. So you prepare corpses for a burial, not particularly a doctor. Um, I'm guessing you were trained at a medical school. Experience was my teacher. Experience and... So you want to be an embalmer. Brochures 1 through 5. Courtesy of the Spacer's Choice Department of Career Development. Okay, I've got some questions for you. Oh, uh, I thought there was going to be more questions about the medical thing, but apparently not. So, Conrad, see you later, buddy. And then our final victim is Phyllis Granger, and she seems to be... I mean, I'm assuming it's a she. She seems to be up here. Where the hell are we? Oh, we're at the, the factory plant. Can I, can I go past you, Corporate Duper? I can. Okay, so there, there she is. No, it's a he. Definitely a he. I apologize. You the new worker? No, it's a she. What? I apologize doubly. I'm busy. I'm confused. Um, I'm guessing you're the foreman, but um, Grayside fees. Shit. Silas still on about that. Here, take the fees. I'd appreciate it if you didn't tell Reed I was late on my payment. I won't. Why would I talk to him? These papers aren't signed in your name. Because they're not my fees and not my gravesite. Guy I worked with shot himself. I paid the bill. Oh. So, you're, you paid the bill for the guy that shot himself in the face with the golden teeth, I suppose. That's kind of you, I guess? I could do without the sarcasm. Wasn't acting out of the goodness of my heart. Law requires delinquent gravesite fees to be paid by the deceased party's closest living relative, which meant me. Shame, though. Eugene was a good worker. But he shot himself. Woke up one morning and put a round through his upper story. Can't imagine why. The kid was doing all right at his desk. We all thought he was an upstanding receptionist. Just between the two of us, I'm pretty shocked his weapon didn't misfire. Spacer's choice handguns aren't the most reliable. Wow, um, but must be tough losing it. Is he family? Eugene wasn't family. There we go. Did think so. So, <laughs> the closest living relative. You're you're telling me that the closest living relative to the receptionist was the foreman of the factory. Yeah, I was the closest living person relative to his body at time of death. I'm the one who found him. You see, so I pay the fines. Oh my God! Suicide's a crime. The legal term is irreparable damage to company property. What Eugene did to himself was vandalism. Um, and suicide. I mean, focus on suicide, not vandal. This is, wow, this is too crazy for words. I mean, it's, it's a parody, of course, but it's ridiculous. What are they going to do, arrest this corpse? When one of your workers commits a crime, the entire town pays for it. In other words, Edgewater would have been penalized pretty hard. Whatever Eugene was worth as an asset, we would have had to pay out of pocket to Spacer's choice. But if Space... How does that work exactly? Does Spacer's choice pay these people then? Because if they pay those people to work for them, if they shoot themselves... I don't know how this logic actually works. Um, so yeah, obviously he was a person, not an asset. Well, excuse you. I'll have you know, Eugene was an asset to us all. May his atoms be commended to the law. All I know is Silas asked me for Eugene's gravesite fees, which means he was approved for burial, which means his papers went through, which means the town's in the clear. I'm just glad to put this whole ugly affair behind me. Eugene can rest his bones in peace, and the rest of us can get on with our own lives. Okay. This place is getting weirder by the minute, Parvati. I don't know... Yeah, hi. You kind of look like a robot in that outfit. Um, but yeah, that was... Wow, this is just too crazy for words. Let's go talk to Silas, because we now have all the gray side fees. So the marker system is a bit old. It put me out of this exit, but I need to go through the front gate, because Silas is over there. So I need to run around the entire town now, to, just to get back to Silas. I used to skip rocks in the river to 
Constable Reyes ticketed me for unlicensed terraforming. I think she was jealous. She don't know how to skip rocks her own self. Yeah, stupid, stupid constable. Um, so that's again one of those really weird remarks that she was ticketed for illegal terraforming just for skipping rocks. But let's talk to Silas. Hello, man. I did your job for you. For a visit? Jump for happiness. Lovely to see you about, Miss Parvati. Things going all right, Silas? Been keeping him careful and true, miss. Um, what are you talking about, Silas? Best to ask her yourself. Okay. My dad's buried here. Silas watches over him when I get... When I can't leave the house. Um, okay. That's... I'm, I'm sorry, Parvati. Oh. Well, thanks. Something I can do for you? Everybody's so happy when you're friendly to them in this place. Because they apparently are not used to it. Um, about those fees? You run into any trouble? Nope. Reliable work from a freelancer. That's gonna take some getting used to. Um, so yeah, I went out of my way for you, so... You got anything extra in those pockets? And I'll buy you a drink sometime. Okay, I was hoping for something more tangible. Uh, suppose you've earned it. One good turn deserves another. There we go. I don't know what I just got, but there we go. Bit cartridges. Uh, 450, so I'm swimming in money. Um, Abernathy was trying to hide his own illness. I'm not going to tell him that. That is... That is ridiculous. So I'm just going to just gonna leave. Thank you, Silas. See you next time. So now, let's fuck up this town. And go to the Geothermal Master Control Terminal. There we go. Um, a Primal Brute... Hi. A successful attack while sneaking inflicts extra damage. Higher sneak skill increases the bonus damage. Oh, that's a biggie. That's that's a biggie. I should probably not attack the biggie. Oh, there's another one. I didn't see the one in the water. I should probably fuck off for a second. Um, slowly moving past the giant monkey creatures. But now that I look at it, I think the plasma rifle actually does more damage. So some energy weapons can charge up for the bigger attack. Hold the attack button to build up energy and then release. Okay, so that's what I thought. This thing actually has a charge option. So sounds like a great idea to be using this instead of the pistol then. I also need to remember to pick up weapons even though I have them already. Because I can scrap those for weapon parts. Same with armor, I can grab it and then just dismantle it immediately to get more parts. So, with that little camp taken out, let's go and continue our way towards the uh, geothermal controls over there. There's another one of those big monkeys here. Um, and... Charging, I don't know when it's going to be fully charged, but there we go. Well, that killed it, at least. Um, there we go. I think I called it. Didn't I get it? Oh, what the hell? Now I got it. Okay. I love plasma weapons. Holy crap. The Ravager and then the Behemoth is now a pile of ash. But he still has a brain for some reason. It's a pile of ash with a brain. Must be a really smart pile of ash. And this is probably the geothermal plant. Looks like a bit of a factory with uh, the four smokestacks churning out whatever that's supposed to be. It looks like embers. 800 experience just for that. So that's really nice. Yeah, you and me both, Parvati. Can't open up this door. At least it looks like a door, but I'm sure it's just the texture of a door. So this blocked off with... An electric fence and swarming with drones apparently. Can I open this up? It doesn't seem like I can. Hmm. Can I uh, shoot the fence? No. Can I shoot through the fence? There we go, that's one of them down. Um, Parvati. 
You're standing in the electrical fence. Definitely killing. You, you, but what are you? Can we just walk through that? I don't think we can walk through that, Parvati. You, you surely can, but I'm not even gonna try that. That seems a, a bit risky. The fence does seem to go all around, although this... Wouldn't this be... There we go. <laughs> Doesn't seem like a very effective fence. Uh, and more ammo where that came from, which is always nice. And there we go, took out another sentry with a sneak attack. Thank you, Prava. I love how she cheers you on. That's, that gives me a nice feeling. Oh, and there was an opening in the fence here as well. Uh, low pressure suits. An increased bonus to tech skills as well. Let's check that out. Doesn't seem like something I, I'll be using, but what else do we have here? There's a few... Ugh dead people so what the hell happened here Ooh, fun time barrel mag to power and a bit cartridge and then i could use the assault rifle too because i haven't made any changes to my assault rifle and since mine is already a bit damaged might as well use the pristine one i have over here 215 dps 215 but magazine 2 and sight 2 this one just have just has the same so I wonder why there are two notches on it. But there we go. Let's swap it around like that and dismantle the one I had. So that seems like the way to do this. Since we have a weapon. Uh, ooh, that's a light assault rifle. But I can scrap that for parts anyway. We can hack this terminal. Disarm the security fence. Definitely. And then view recent logs. Seems like this uh, facility hasn't been used for a while now. Because there's uh, old logs of everything breaking down. Nothing else that's really interesting there. So now the electric fences are down at least. And we can check out the robots we killed from through the fence. It's also a dead scientist, which is weird. He was running for this door which is locked. So I feel like the robots just went haywire. And started attacking everybody. Vending machine discovered apparently. And yeah, there's multiple dead scientists here, which is weird. What caused the robots to go haywire like this? Let's find out. Because even the security personnel has been wiped out. There's corporate commanders right here as well. A nondescript ring, don't mind if I take all of that. Another dead scientist here in the corner. So definitely everybody was murdered by the, uh, by the robots. But why? Why these poor people? Corporation Service Award. What was this award for? Most unused paid time off? Greatest amount of coffee drunk in one break? Fewest bathroom rest? You will never know. Indeed, we won't. Let's take this shotgun as well. And there's a back entrance here as well, apparently. So let's use this door to go to the geothermal power plant. So it seems like the plasma rifle actually does more damage against these robotic enemies. The control room should be ahead somewhere and a touch to the right. Which kind of makes sense. Right yeah, I'm hoping that as well, Orvalti. Dervish mist. And otherwise, seems pretty quiet. Here we go. There we go. Double shot taking care of it. Oh god. There we go. I love this thing. This thing is amazing. I need more of those, so energy cells, definitely. Because this is just an amazing weapon. Pew, 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 all the way. So there's a way down and there's a way up. But there's also this floor, of course, where we need to go. Um, I'm just going to check the upper area. Because I feel like the buildings are pretty realistic in size. And that there's not too much to discover in one single location. Oh, it seems to be... I could hack this. But I'm assuming we're going to be able to find the key somewhere else as well. And this was the reception. Because there's a dead receptionist on the floor. Yes, my powers of deduction know no bounds. But last time in the uh, the other in the community center, we actually found a way to make the key from the terminal. So maybe we can do that here as well. I had to borrow your copy of the Young Spaces Guide to Mechanical, Mechanical Engineering. Radio has been sputtering and I needed a reference. I've returned the copy to the repair bay. 
Chaos everywhere, mechanicals gone haywire, gunfire, hearing some screams, oh law, I think that was someone's leg. Would like to leave early for the day, please deduct delinquency fee from my pay. Thank you, prep me. prepare to be a member of Spacer's Choice family. So this guy was even afraid to leave the office while the robots were murdering everybody. Typical. And since we're going through this all diligently, I'm gonna check downstairs first. There's more prats. It's always nice, I like a bit of company. A bit of uh, life in the ooh, worker outfit in the factory. That was that was terrible. There's only a little bit of life. I love how the robots did keep keep the rats alive for some reason. Or should I say sprats? Uh, pick up stimulation, stimulation. Ah, that sounds a bit weird. And then more mag picks. And then we have this terminal. Unlock the door. Warning, this facility is in a state of lockdown. Authorization passcode required. Okay. Personal files. So apparently the company systematically replaced everybody working here with the robots until the point that the mechanicals went crazy. So the chief of security locked himself down here, just trying to gather my courage. Gonna make a mad dash for the control room. Might be able to shut things down. And then an ultimate message from the company itself, just urging them to be calm. But no idea where the code is going to be right now. Maybe on Chief Tanaka's corpse would be logical, I would think. So he went for the control room. Uh, this is also closed off. And I need a hell of a lot of materials to open that up. So I'm not going to do that. So the only room that's, that, that's left then is this room. So I'm guessing that leads to the control room. Just gonna check to the side here what this is all about. Might find another corpse. Somebody hiding behind the machinery. Well, there's something over here at least. Bit cartridge, okay. So that's money. That's that. And then on the other side... Aha! A corpse of a plant worker with a pocket watch. And another bypass shunt. That's basically it, nothing else behind the machinery. So let's head towards the terminal. Just gonna crouch, because I'm pretty sure gonna, there's gonna be more robots. Or not. This seems like the control room, right? So if the security chief was going to be here... There's a lot of blood here. But nobody... This is weird. There's no corpse. So there's a lot of blood, but no corpse. It's a bit weird, but let's check the terminal. Um, I'm apparently using something if I do that. Okay, let's make the big decision here. Plant status. Operating at 22% efficiency, power is currently being distributed to Edgewater Saltuna Cannery and Botanical Laboratory. Structural damage detected, please notify your designated supervisor. Now we can redirect the power. But wait a second, can't I repair anything here then? If I wanted to, there's structural damage, so I suppose the structural damage can be repaired. Doesn't seem out of the realm of possibility, but I'm guessing we might get the option later. Uh, so let's just check the terminal, redirect the power. And okay, comes now the power. Please activate all three electrical track switches. Manual override required. Okay, so what, what does that mean? Is it something over here that I need to do? No, routing switch. Three switches, that'll be easy enough. Yeah, I suppose so. You're the mechanical genius here. I'm just a medical man. But that's of course through the door. And it's sealed. And I don't have the code for it. I can unlock the door and then enter the passcode, but oh. Oh, I got the passcode from Reed. That is great. I think we checked all of that out, right? Yeah, so there was somebody fidgeting with the, uh, the robots before everything went haywire as well. So it might be just a uh, disgruntled employee that caused all of this. There's definitely robots. Yeah, there's two. I think the map is a bit too generous with the, the ticks on top. 
Because this is hard difficulty. Don't, don't forget about that. This is hard difficulty, but for some reason it just shows you on the map where the enemies are. And there we go. So that killed that guy. And then we can open, well, grab all his loot. And now we have another corpse, the corpse of another plant worker. So nondescript plant worker. Um, another mechanical sentry just opens up into another room, probably with another robot running around. So let's charge up the rifle so we can get a nice critical shot. Processing. Performance. There we go. That was a critical. Oh god. That was the... There we go. I don't think that it is, because there's still one more tick here. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Parvati, go quiet, go quiet. We're gonna do this stealthily. Um, so there's two more robots we killed, so we can grab the loot. And then in the middle here we have another plant worker. And another one. Flywheel, a small metal device used to store rotational energy. Yeah, that's one way to describe that. Oh god. Yeah. Seems like this happened really quickly. Everybody's just lying where they were working, probably. So that's really, really sad. But there's multiple rooms here as well. And that uh, one robot that's left is hiding out in the toilet? No. Oh, in the toilet on the other side, probably. Right control gear. I'll check out armor in a minute. Um, ooh. Let's check this out. That's another Mac pick. Uh, and a few more molds. Always, always nice. And a very wealthy plant worker. For some reason, 202 bit cartridges. That's really, really nice. I mean, it's not like she has any use for it. And this seems to be interesting as well. So there's a few hacking bits and pieces. And now we have a hastily written note. Borrow the copy of the Young Spacer's Guide to Mechanical Engineer. I think it's volume three. I need something to read down in the pit. Higgins. So that was the guy that was also fidgeting around with the mechanicals. Which is interesting. And then this terminal. Repair bay. Access repair log. And a few of the engineers, especially Higgins, actually found out that the entirety of the mechanicals were refitted by the company. Which was weird, of course, because they're always looking to be as cheap as possible. But they refitted all the mechanicals with a new logic subroutine. And that's probably what made them go haywire. And since Higgins was the guy that was fired before that, I'm assuming he was on the right track. And this goes up here as well. So I know the game points us to that, to the routing switch, but I just want to check out everything else before, you know, we trigger anything. Oh, and this seems to be the big one, because there's a lot of uh, mechanicals running around here as well. So next up is going to be that, but before we head any further, optional chest is possible. Before we head any further, I'm going to take a little break as we've, going, we've been going for quite a while now. So uh, thank you guys enormously for watching. When we get back, we're going to finish up in the geothermal plant and decide what we'll do with uh, Edge Walter's powers. Thank you guys enormously for watching. Hope you guys enjoyed this episode and see you guys next time in the next episode of The Outer Worlds. Goodbye!